Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, so I'm going to be talking about our work to enable uh, library-defined optimization. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. But first, uh, <clears throat> let me introduce what I think is one of the dilemmas of the modern programmer. So um, we now we, now that we have nice high-level languages that are widely used, and so we want to write high-level code that is um, not, not repetitive, that is more composable, such as uh, stream programs like this. This is a functional program that manipulates streams of data by using higher order functions uh, and compositions of them, such as zipping two streams, which puts elements from two different streams into a single stream, for example. And uh, the problem is that um, we don't want to pay for it, right? Because usually these abstractions uh, incur some non-negligible overhead, and uh, we would like to get rid of it. So the point is that we know how we would rewrite that code manually uh, into low-level code, right? It's going to be um, using for loops and variables and th things like that. But um, we just don't want to, right? Because it's, uh, it's too low-level, it's uh, too error-prone, hard to evolve, hard to compose. So let's use metaprogramming instead. Um, so um, I'm going to be uh, talking about the Squid framework, which is our uh, framework for metaprogramming in Scala. And uh, this framework is, uh, revolves around the, user, uh, the use of quasi-quotes. Uh, a quasi-quote is, uh, as you can see here, uh, it's a, like a quoted code fragment. So one, two, three, two, double. It's a, a program that we quote. And it, that quote represents the uh, intermediate representation of, uh, of the program that is quoted. And um, Squid statically typed, typed the, the quasi-code. So this particular expression has type code of double. And uh, then uh, it's quasi-code because you can compose co uh, uh, coded code together. As in here, we insert the value TD inside a bigger program. And it results in a, uh, the 1, 2, 3, 2, double plus 1. So another thing is that you can compile this piece of code at runtime. So um, if you do dot compile on a quasi-code or any pro program fragment, you, you get uh, an actual value that you can that, that you can uh, execute. Um, yeah, I'm, I can give a very quick demo for this capability. Um, so this is the, the example in the slides. Uh, you see this has type uh, IR double any. Disregard the IR double any, it's equivalent to code of double. Um, and so, yeah, so here uh, you can see that the quasi-quotes are hygienic, meaning that the symbols are resolved uh, during the time the quasi-quote is, uh, is compiled, and so you don't have problems because uh, with, with colliding symbols because the names are fully resolved. Um, so then I can use this TZ, T, uh, yeah, let's, let's say this is, well, it doesn't matter, but I can compose programs together such as this and then call compile on them. So this invokes the Scala compiler at runtime and uh, gives me an uh, efficient function uh, corresponding to actual bytecode for, for this program and um, then I can execute it. Um, so what about uh, doing multi-stage programming? Because with these tools, we have all that is needed to, to, do, to do that uh, technique, uh, which is a very useful technique. But uh, we're going to see why it's not always the best. Um, yes, yeah, so the basic example of uh, multi-stage programming is, as usual, the, the power function, right? So this is a power function that um, uh, takes an exponent n, and then it returns a function from double to double, uh, as usual, right? I think most of us are familiar with this example. And so we can time its execution for some exponent 50 and uh, 50,000 times, let the JIT warm up a little, and see that uh, that's the performance. And then we're going to stage the power function, so we're going to notate the uh, uh, double uh, types with code. So this means the power function is now not just a function, but a code generator. 
it's a function that generates a, a program for efficiently compiling the the power of of n. So because it in the, all the rec recursive calls, uh, let's see what it looks like. So this is the result of uh, calling power stage of 50. We get a function that we are all uh, multiplications are in mind, and so as expected, it's more efficient. Uh, yeah. So staging is good, but um, the code uh, that uses staged libraries often become uh, more uh, cumbersome and ugly because it means you have to annotate uh, pieces of your program with the code type. And uh, so we, the original program looks much simpler. It looked like that. Um, and now it, it's, it's significantly worse. And you have to adapt the whole program, the whole user program, to make use of, of staging. Um, also, uh, by default, traditional staging uh, is purely generative. You, you just generate code. You don't inspect code. And that can be very limiting. Um, so if you don't want, uh, if you want to inspect codes with other alternatives, such as uh, LMS, you have to dig into the intermediate representation of the program, look at the nodes, and uh, it's uh, pretty low level and error prone. So that's the problems we're going to solve in Squid. Um, so let's see how to teach the, the compiler to optimize code with Squid um, without using explicitly a staging. So Squid can do code ins inspection using the same quasi code ability. Um, which is uh, also type safe, and it's easier to, to use. Um, and additionally, Squid offers several tools that we're going to detail how uh, they, they use to achieve our initial goal of uh, library-defined uh, optimization. So we're going to see it later. Um, let's see a demo of program rewriting. Um, so let's say you have a program that is not staged, uh, such as this one, that uses the math.pool uh, power function. So you don't have, so you, you can actually optimize programs that use pre-existing uh, libraries. You don't have to define a new library that the user has to start using. Um, and then uh, this is a um, rewrite, uh, rewriting program transformer that is going to uh, transform that uh, usage, usages of the math.po uh, function into binary exponentiation as long as the exponent is constant. So it's very similar to the stage power function. The main difference is that it uses uh, pattern matching to extract the static part out of the program. And um, um, yeah, that's, uh, and it doesn't require a change in the user interface of the library. So uh, as expected, this uh, produces the following program where the math.pool function is replaced by uh, binary exponentiation. So uses a multiplication. Um, and then we can, as usual, compile it and run it. And we, the f function that we get at runtime is a really an efficient function that, that only contains multiplications. Um, so, <clears throat> I mentioned that Squid has other uh, facilities to, to help with uh, library-defined optimization. In particular, it allows you to define several stages of rewriting and inlining, because usually you don't want to inline everything right away. You want to do some rewriting before inlining into the lower level, and then more rewriting, and then more inlining. So you annotate your m methods with a phase annotation that Squid can leverage to um, <clears throat> define your pipeline of inlining and rewriting. Uh, yeah, and, and then you can compose program transformations. But I'm not going to go into the detail because I don't think I have time. Um, <clears throat> so Squid also supports uh, compile time optimization. So once you're done uh, writing your transformer to manipulate programs, you can uh, leverage Squid to apply those transformations transformers at the compile time of your program. So in the examples we've seen before, um, the Scala compiler was invoked at the runtime of your program. So it means that uh, it takes some time to start up. Um, and uh, it has some runtime dependency. Maybe not ideal. Sometimes it's OK. 
but uh, you also have this pattern where um, you can define static optimizers using squid that use the rewriting rules that you defined. And in this example, you can encode uh, a piece of code using this optimized macro. So it's a, it's a Scala macro provided by squid that uses your rewrite rules and it will uh, rewrite this code at compile time of your program into the efficient code that we saw before. So the result is that uh, by just enclosing uh, pieces of code that use the streams library we defined in the paper, um, we, we get the same performance as low-level loops, basically. So uh, similar performance as, as staging, although uh, we do actually a little bit, a little bit more fusion that uh, previous approaches couldn't do. Uh, but yeah, basically that's the, the idea. Um, <clears throat> so, conclusions. Um, Squid is uh, very practical. It's uh, practically oriented. It's ac accessible in the sense that you don't need to know much to use it and to right away start uh, designing, rewriting. Um, and it allows people, it allows uh, library uh, uh, authors to design high-level libraries uh, using nice abstractions and at the same time design an optimizer that knows how to remove those abstractions uh, de uh, depending on the patterns of usage of that library. So uh, I think it's a nice trade-off. Um, Squid puts the emphasis on type, type safety, so it checks that uh, rewritings are type preserving. For example, if I, um, in this big rewriting, if I had written uh, here something else, such as nil, which is the, the empty list in Scala, um, it's not gonna compile, cannot rewrite a term of type double to nil, right? Um, and so the, this, this helps with correctness. It means the programmers have less trouble uh, they, they don't crash as much uh, when they are playing, and so it means it's a better user uh, experience for the users of your library. Um, so to summarize the features of Squid, uh, we have static typed quasi codes that can do pattern matching, which is in itself uh, novel, and it also provides a lot of uh, useful uh, tools to um, design program transformations that go beyond simple rewriting. So. Um, tools to allow you to design a pipeline of um, of optimizations and, and inlining. And so inlining is important because uh, you want to allow users to define their own functions, but you want your library optimizer to see through these functions. And so you have to give um, the ability to the user, um, the ability to the library to inline the user's functions to, to, to see the actual constructs of the library being used. Um, and so coded stage rewriting is this um, technique that uh, we've seen, we've just seen in the code example. So the technique of using rewrite rules that are um, enhanced with arbitrary code execution and, sta and, and staging primitives basically using quasi-codes. So you can execute arbitrary code in the patterns, which means patterns can be very flexible, and in the template Part, so in the right hand side of rewriting. For example, here I could just call, instead of generating another call to, to the power function that will be rewritten later, I could also just call the staged power function directly and get the, the code directly. It's different trade-offs. Um, yeah. And uh, Squid also has a compile time optimization, which is, which is useful in many contexts. Yep, yeah. uh, thank you. <laughs>